where you're starting in the SQL side of the house, is that the end game to get to where you're answering those bigger questions? It definitely is the end game. The end game is to make a data-driven decision, which we believe, and most organizations are bought into this concept, that is a better decision than making a decision based on gut instinct or what we would do maybe mindlessly without really thinking about it. Hi there, everyone. This is Brian Amron with Value Driven Analytics coming to you with a very special episode. We're going to have a open analytics discussion with my friend Gary Spakes, founder of Rich Trail Ventures. So excited to have you on the channel today, Gary. Thanks for having me, Brian. I've been watching your uh, channel and following it for a little while now. And the one thing that I've noticed about uh, what you're doing is you're spending a lot of time in um, working with SQL and, and, and SQL and doing a lot of data prep yeah. and a lot of data preparation there. And I just wanted to ask you, you know, to what end is that? Because when I think about analytics, I think about an analytics process, an analytics lifecycle where you prepare data, you explore it so that you can then analyze it and build an analytic model to then validate that model, put it in production and monitor it. You spent a lot of time here in your series just on the data preparation side. Of yeah. That. So help me understand a little bit about why you're spending so much time there in data preparation at the beginning of the stages and yeah. and uh, and where are you going to go from that? Oh, you're absolutely right. Um, analytics is a journey. In fact, it's a journey usually to improve some kind of a process. So the end result uh, of analytics is to make a better decision. Uh, and so data manipulation using SQL or Python or Power BI, whatever tool you're using, it's just the beginning. Um, now, with SQL in particular, a lot of times people are using SQL to either create a database, set up tables, or to manipulate data in a database. So that's the beginning set. Uh, and then from there, you'd extract that, maybe to create a predictive model, maybe to create a dashboard in Power BI where your stakeholders can drill in interactively to find insights. Um, so the SQL manipulation is just the starting point to get the data in the right shape, the right rows, the right columns. Um, and that can be tricky sometimes depending on your use case. But from there, you're building on that and really doing the analysis. You're really finding insights in the data and then eventually taking those insights, turning them into a recommendation for management to make a data-driven decision. Yeah, that's just a begin. Yeah, you know, when I, when I think about that on the SQL side of the house, we're really spending so much time just in the broad category of descriptive analytics where it's historical. You're looking at data from the point now backwards. So, you know, where does the predictive, <laughs> that big broad category of, of predictive analytics come into play? Oh boy, it is a big category. Uh, when people talk about predictive analytics, they might be talking about a time series model where they just want to see a forecast of sales or production, some metric that they want to know in the future. And so ultimately, when you create a prediction like that, or really any other kind of prediction, you aren't using historical information. You've got to learn from the past, learn the seasonal patterns, learn the kind of trend you're on right now, and use both of those things in a data science model, oftentimes when it's a prediction of time going forward for a metric, you're looking at a time series model uh, like ARIMA or Bolt Winters. Um, you're using a technique like that to predict something into the future. But another version of predictive modeling that perhaps a lot of times actually drives more value is predicting something at the customer level, perhaps, or the product level to make a prediction of this is the customer that's most likely to buy, or even better than that, this is the customer that a sales touch point or a marketing touch point will have the greatest incremental impact on their likelihood to buy in their future sales. That's where you start seeing a lot of data, uh, a lot of value coming out of your data, where you can give that model to your sales team, to your marketing team to actually change decisions. You think about a prediction of sales, it's helpful to know where you're going to be um, next month Maybe it helps you staff better uh, according to the demand you expect. But when you get to like those customer level predictions and even recommendation models predicting what they're most likely to buy so you can tailor even the ad and the, the message differently for them, 
that's really where you're going to see even more value in my experience. Yeah. You know, when I'm uh, looking at uh, some of this, you know, for our, our, our viewers here, uh, there's really three broad categories of analytics that are out there. There's the descriptive analytics, which are statistics, things like sums, counts, averages, mins, max, standard deviations. All those formulas are in Excel that you can then turn around and use. They're also in, in SQL uh, as well in Python, be able to do that. But then there's the predictive side of the house where you're really starting to uh, see some of the value. And there's three big categories there, data mining, forecasting, and text mining. And data mining may be something like uh, a recommendation engine or because you watch this on Netflix, other people might like to watch this. Or because you bought this on Amazon, other people might like to buy this. You know, kind of market basket analysis, prediction engines. Forecasting isn't just all about sales though. You know, it's, it could be tech, different things that go along with that time series data uh, that you're talking about like, um, uh, we are filming this in January, so um, we just had New Year's, and um, you know, you could be somebody like uh, OnStar here in the United States from the car side of the house. And how many people do I need to put into my call center uh, on New Year's Eve uh, to handle uh, automobile accidents? Not that we condone drinking and driving, but that does happen with yeah. automobile accidents. How many people? Not just how how much sales. Uh, and, uh, the, the third big category inside of predictive is text mining. So, you know, when we say something like Paris Hilton likes to Paris Hilton, that's not two counts at Paris is and two counts of Hilton. It's actually being able to identify a person, a place and a sentiment around that. And that all leads to optimization, uh, or a prescriptive analytic, if they call it that, that big broad category yes. And things like uh, UPS and FedEx try not to make a uh, a left turn in New York City right. because it's quicker to make three rights. They're not really optimizing on distance. They're optimizing on time. Yeah. So when you think about that whole process and where you're starting yeah. with the SQL side of the house, yeah, is that the end game to get to where you're answering those bigger questions? It, it definitely is the end game. The end game is to make a data-driven decision, which we believe, and most organizations are bought into this concept, that that is a better decision than making a decision based on gut instinct or what we would do maybe mindlessly without really thinking about it, giving a data-driven insight that leads to an action. So you've got to be able to manipulate the data in a certain way and SQL provides a lot of flexibility around So does Python, but SQL is analytic stable that can be used in Python and just about any other analytics tool as well. So for all of our data analytics use, uh, our data analyst viewers out there, learn SQL. We've got videos, multiple videos, a whole playlist on our channel to learn SQL. It helps get that data set in the right format to build a model. Now you can't really build many models. You can do market basket analysis in SQL, but outside of that, yeah, you know, clustering, um, regression, machine learning, neural networks, you can't build those models with SQL. You can build the data set with SQL, but from there you're going to need an advanced analytics tool like Python, R, or SAS. Got a lot of videos on our channel about learning Python, of course. We highly recommend that. There's a lot of growth uh, in data science usage of Python. So if, if you're choosing between the three, I'd recommend Python. But even then, that model is being built for a specific purpose. It's not just to build a model. And all that that's interesting. It's to find a predictive or prescriptive insight. And those are some great use cases you mentioned, Gary, especially on the prescriptive side. One of the most popular prescriptive use cases I've seen, and perhaps one of the most valuable, is something like a sales driver model or a media mix model, where with prescriptive in analytics, you're not just trying to predict something, you're trying to understand what drives this target metric. And to your point, it doesn't have to be sales. A lot of times it is sales, but it could be something else like demand or accidents or in get customer engagement if you're analyzing a survey data set. So with media mix modeling and sales driver modeling, you're, of course, your target variable is going to be sales. Um, your data set might be, you want it as granular as, as possible generally, but maybe one row per DMA marketing area um, or DMA month or time period combination. And you're predicting sales in that area, in that month, and you're using 
all of the different things that you know or that you suspect might drive sales. Pricing, um, salesperson headcount that's changed over time, your marketing on paid search, your marketing on Facebook, on Twitter, all of these different channels, you've got a data set that has how much you spent in that area in that month. And you're building something like a regression or machine learning model on top of that to say, yeah, we've analyzed the past in the highest correlation with sales. You kind of have to be careful with that in some cases because correlation isn't always causation, but you're doing your very best to control for everything else. Um, seasonality, even even one of your variables might represent how the economy was doing at that point, since that can be a driver. You want everything that could possibly drive your sales that you suspect could drive your sales in that model to control for those things. And then you're able to see, oh, this, this campaign or this marketing channel or uh, this sales team that we've ramped up and ramped down over time, this seems to be the biggest driver of sales. Let's invest more in those. Or this one doesn't really seem to have hardly any impact on sales. Let's think about maybe reducing our spend in that area. And that op that goes to the optimization yeah, yeah. you're talking about. Um, so data analytics is, is such a journey. You start with the SQL, well, then you build the model. That gives you insights that you can take actions on. Yeah, so in, in, in summary, really, Ryan, what you've been uh, doing on your channel is that data preparation phase. And when we think about that analytic life cycle, there is so much more that's involved with it, exploring your data. And you may have to iterate back to preparation to explore again and iterate back again to get to the point where you're building a model, uh, an analytic model. And you're just talking crazy talk with like ARIMA and auto neural network and gradient boost ensemble models. I mean, and so those, those, those are things that you haven't even mentioned on, on, your, on any of your other videos uh, so far. Uh, to then get ready to, after you build that model, validate it, to then deploy it so that you can get those insights that are recurring over and over and over again. So um, in, the, in the next episode, let's talk a little bit more about data preparation and not, not preparation, but exploration, because in that preparation phase, uh, you're building that analytic based table that's going to help solve things. Um, uh, it's you're getting ready to actually solve it. So let's let's uh, let's uh, close this one out and uh, just talk a little bit more about the data exploration and some of the things that go along with that in the, in the, in the next episode. Back to you. Close it out for us. Absolutely. Well, I hope this has been helpful for you. Uh, like Gary mentioned, a lot of the channels so far has focused on data manipulation, especially that early stage using SQL, even Python in some cases, have a few videos on data science but I'm excited to have this kind of conversation that talks about where the rubber meets the road. Maybe this video has spurred some ideas for, for how you can use the SQL skills that you've been learning on my channel um, and take it forward from there. And I'm so excited for our next conversation. Thanks again, Gary. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. I appreciate it. And if you're a decision maker, you need to uh, give value-driven analytics a, a, a call because you need their expertise. We'd love to help you. Um, and Ridge Trail Ventures is there to help you as well. So looking forward to partnering together in the future. Um, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, like our upcoming videos where we talk about where analytics meets the road, where the rubber meets the road, uh, please consider subscribing to Value Driven Analytics, our YouTube channel. Like the video if you enjoyed it and leave a comment. Gary or I would love to answer your questions as soon as we can. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.